Good morning, St. Luke's. Good and good morning to anybody viewing on Facebook. It's a delight to have you here. A delight to be here with you. Um, it's a glorious day. It was a little more humid it felt this morning, but it feels wonderful now. So let us begin. As you are able, please stand. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God. And let us say together the College for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the song of praise again together. I will sing a new song to my God. For you are great and glorious, wonderful in strength, invincible. Let the whole creation serve you. For you spoke and all things came into being. You sent your breath and it formed them. No one is able to resist your voice. Mountains and seas are stirred to their depths. Rocks melt like wax at your presence. But to those who fear you, you continue to show mercy. No sacrifice, however fragrant, can please you. But whoever fears the Lord shall stand in your sight forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we, who cannot exist without you, may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Jacob, I'm sorry, Jacob, Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report to them, of them, to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them, he answered. Here I am. So he said to them, Go now. See if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pasturing the flock? The man said, They have gone away. For I heard them say, Let us go to Duthan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Duthan. They saw him in the distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal had devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with the sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan, a caravan of Is Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profits is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of gold. 
and they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Let's read Psalm 105 in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave, they bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar, until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him, the ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but, his, but this time the boat battered by by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. 
and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. When he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strong rock and our Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I often comment that we share a common story in scriptures, and I, I believe that we should all cherish it. As we follow the lectionary, though, we often get little snippets of the Old Testament readings, and it can become difficult to kind of capture some of the lineage through Abraham to Jacob and via Isaac. So I'm going to do a little review that helps us bridge the point that Matthew's driving home. In Genesis, we continue down the family tree of Abraham. And what a family. For modern day entertainment, our ancestors are riddled with intrigue, scandal, and even appalling behavior. Hagar, Sarah's servant, bore a son to Abraham named Ishmael. Then Sarah bore a son named Isaac. Ishmael, the half-brother to Isaac, was sent away because Hagar, and with Hagar, because Sarah was uncomfortable with their situation. Isaac had two sons, with Rebekah, Esau, and Jacob. Jacob tricks Isaac, who was losing his sight on his deathbed, and Jacob receives Isaac's blessing, something generally only given to one child, usually the eldest male. Esau was upset furious even, and Jacob fled. Jacob built a life for himself elsewhere and married Rachel, or so he thought, but it was actually Leah, her older sister. Then he married Rachel as well. Laban tricked Jacob, and some might say he deserved it for tricking his own father. As Jacob matures and ages, he yearns to return to his homeland and reconcile with his brother Esau after so many years. And he does. Before the reconciliation, Esau actually marries a daughter of Ishmael's line, bridging what was often perceived as a family divided. Then Jacob, the deceiver, is later deceived by his children. And this is the reading we heard this morning. His favorite, Joseph, one of his sons with Rachel, was sold into slavery by his brothers to the Ishmaelites. In some sordid twist of this family tree, Ishmael's lineage of the one who was ejected from a family took charge over the alternate line of Isaac under Jacob. And since Esau married an Ishmaelite, it seems fitting that it is the people into whom Esau marries that take charge over his younger brother's son, Joseph. Knowing our common story in scripture is important. It is a story of our ancestry. It is an oral tradition that encourages us to wrestle with God, just as Jacob had. And it surely is a stormy sea of wild family tales with deception, subversion, and even abuse. 
We who hear these stories millennia after they took place can hear them with a certain calm. I suppose if we time traveled, we might have felt the turbulent rage and frustration of Joseph's brothers, Jacob's sons, or of Jacob's brother Esau. The story of lineage also connects the Hebrew understanding of the fulfillment of the Messiah. The one who is to come to save God's people was expected to be born of this wild lineage. At the start of the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew connects Jesus through a long genealogy from Abraham through King David and then to Joseph, Jesus' father. Not the same Joseph we heard about in the Old Testament reading. Since we know Mary conceived by the Holy Spirit, we might wonder why Matthew's Gospel creates this family tree through Jesus' adoptive father. Matthew upholds the Jewish faith and culture of the time, which followed paternal lineage for a link to ancestors. Even more importantly, one might ask why a gospel would literally begin with 17 verses of genealogy. It is about fulfillment. Matthew has a distinct focus on the fulfillment of scripture coming to fruition in Jesus, the Messiah. So Matthew strikes to make it clear that Jesus is not just another prophet, not just another healer, not just another holy man or teacher, but the Messiah. A couple weeks ago, we heard the parables of the kingdom of heaven in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus sounds like a wise teacher. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in a field, or like a mustard seed. And at the end of chapter 13, Jesus is rejected in his hometown of Nazareth. Now we have an interpretation of Jesus as a prophet, as they were commonly not accepted in their hometowns. Then at the start of chapter 14, Jesus learns his cousin John the Baptist was beheaded after some time in prison. Jesus is in a storm of his own. His hometown offers him no sense of comfort. His family members are being unjustly killed. Then after seeking some time alone in a deserted place, crowds found him once again. Despite having all the reasons to be angry because of the emotional storms that must have been overwhelming him, Jesus had compassion for the crowd. He healed many, still only affirming the role of a healer. Then he fed the multitudes. Scripture tells us 5,000 besides the women and children. This act was the beginning to elevating Jesus beyond teacher, prophet, healer, to Messiah. He feeds the hungry. He provides sustenance for the body and for the spirit. His presence gave hope, which is why so many came to see him. After that was completed, he sent his apostles by boat on the sea while he tried to take some time in solitude and prayer. Suddenly, a literal storm engulfs the apostles and Jesus does what no teacher, what no prophet, what no healer can do. He walks calmly across the water. Jesus rises above the turbulent waves. Matthew delivers a clear perception here. Jesus is the Messiah. You see, Jesus was connected through the ancestors. And if we look back through the ancestors, we find another clue. Moses, a crucial figure, provided deliverance to God's people. The Hebrews, which was freedom from slavery. How did Moses accomplish this and what was it marked by? He parted the Red Sea for the Hebrews to cross into their new life in freedom. Crossing bodies of water has long been understood as demarcating vital moments in the lives of peoples and cultures. It is why new members of the church are invited through the waters of baptism. 
Moses had to part the water to cross it. Jesus walks on top of it. Now that we have Matthew's understanding of the Messiah solidified, we can step into Peter's shoes for a moment. Peter reacts in an unexpected way. Imagine we are on a small boat with waves crashing over the sides. The sky is gray and the winds are pushing the sea, the seawater into our eyes. We cannot keep balance long enough to even continue rowing. We are at the mercy of the currents, the winds, the storm in general. Our lives are at risk. Shore is over a mile away. It is worth noting the Sea of Galilee was four miles wide. If someone came who knew we could, who could help us, what might our first words be to them? Help? Save me. Come and help us. Peter said the unexpected, though. He sought to go to Jesus. He demonstrates a faith that yearns to continually reach out to the Lord. Lord, Peter says, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter strove to follow in the footsteps of the ancestors. He sought to cross the water to freedom. And to be free means to constantly reach out in faith to Christ. It can be easy to be distracted by so many winds and waves that make up the storms in our lives. Today we are encouraged to be so focused on our faith in God that when we embrace the peace of God's presence, the peace that surpasses all understanding, so deeply within us and right before us, that we can walk through any of life's turbulence with confidence. Amen. Please stand as you are able, as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace and in faith, let us offer our prayers, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth and all people, and for those in any kind of need or danger through natural disaster, disease, violence, or injustice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Sally, our bishop, for all priests and deacons, 
And for this congregation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord your mercy, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nation, and for all whose positions of authority and public trust, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord your mercy, hear our prayer. For this town and our neighbors, for all communities and their people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord your mercy, hear our prayer. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to preserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, see our prayer. For the sick and suffering, for all people in any kind of trouble, and for those who have asked our prayers, including Joyce, Patsy, Carol, Janine, Patricia, Vibart, Barbara, Bruce, Carol, Barbara, Herb, Mildred, Valerie, Robert, Tom, Hebert, Sean, Taylor, Ralph, Yvonne, Pat, Bobby, Jacob, Bella, Ben, Barbara, Anna, Keely, Nancy, Audrey, Joan, Stuart, Theo, Audrey, Lorraine and her family, Suzanne and Pasqual, Kayla, Joshua and family, Deacon Naomi, Kathy, Felicia and her family, and Scott. And those we now name, let us pray to the Lord. In your mercy, Lord, in your mercy. In your For our families and all who are dear to us, especially those celebrating birthdays, including Ashley, Kaylin, Alexander and and anniversary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord your mercy. Your for the poor and the unemployed, for the homeless, for prisoners and refugees, and for all who advocate and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord your mercy. Your for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Mary Fink. And for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. In union with the saints, we commit ourselves and our whole life to Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the mercy and compassion demonstrated by your Son, Jesus, our Savior, Please hear the prayers of your people, those we have said aloud, and those that reside in your hearts. Through Jesus Christ we ask this. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you. Well, good morning once again. Just a reminder that Vacation Bible School at Grace St. Paul starts this evening and goes through Thursday. If you know anybody who would like to join us, it's pre-K through post-fifth graders. All are welcome. Um, there is no fee to register. And if you can only make certain days, that's okay too. We'd be delighted to have you there. Um, coffee hour continues. Do we have enough volunteers lined up for the coming weeks? No? 
please, please help us out. Sign up to, to bring in something for coffee hour. It's a pretty easy endeavor, and it's a blessing to the community to be able to spend time together. Fellowship is vital to a Christian community. Some parishioners are still looking for rides. We will continue to put that request out there until you feel that pull on your heart to lean into it and say, I can help. And we are looking to build an altar guild. If anybody is interested, please speak with Pat or myself. I'd be happy to help guide that endeavor. Um, and it's pretty easy when you divide the tasks up amongst many people. It makes it very simple work. I've seen it done very smoothly, and it takes the, the stress and fear out of what could be. Is there anything else that I have missed? All right. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. I would like to thank everybody who helped chip in to bring in these wonderful donations to support the members of our community who are less fortunate than ourselves so that they can take on their endeavors through education with grace. And as such, I'd like to offer this prayer for all of the donations, the backpacks and the gear that will be given to Homefront, right? To Homefront. And thank you to everybody who's donated. If there are people who still feel a desire to donate, we'd be happy to bring those items later as well. Um, there are an enormous number of families, as we've also found near Grace St. Paul's too, who, who really need the help. So the more help, the better. Thank you all. O oh Lord, our creator and provider of all that we have, we offer through your generosity these school supplies as a sign of our love and commitment to our neighbors the children of our community. Bless these gifts, which are to be tools for learning, and the children who use them. Holy Redeemer, may these physical gifts be symbols of the love and support we give to the children of our community throughout the year, renewing the hope of a future filled with knowledge and care. O Holy Spirit, our sustainer, help us to look upon every child in our community as one of our own, and to readily welcome those new to our area into our fold, sustaining them as they grow in character and knowledge. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and a good and joyful and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. And we would not see your goodness in the world around us. So, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us. He revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for the many, and, and for, all, for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you, from your creation, this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Great that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring, uh, bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Luke and all your saints past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For we all share in one bread. And now let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Please stand as you are able for the final prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever 
and the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, who made us, who loves us, and who travels with us, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.